Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Mole Trap here. I am actually here with Rise as well. I have not done a dual commentary or anything like that in a while. Hey, Rise. <laughs> Rise is eating his mic in anticipation, he told me, of this game right here. I'm excited to be doing some multi commentaries. I, I haven't had a lot of time or energy lately, so uh, to to um, get together with the other guys and uh, get our scheduling correct. But you are looking at Bisu. That is not your imagination, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bisu versus. J Dong, yes, I am not even kidding. Bisu versus J Dong, and this is none other than the ace match between SKT and Hua Xiong Oz, and I am just ridiculously excited to watch this match. Back in the, <laughs> exactly, back in the uh, when the Gom TV did their tournament one versus tournament their season one versus season two winners, and uh, J Dong barely beat out Bisu in game five. He said, "I got lucky." This is not over. That's what he said in the interview afterwards. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is part of the ongoing saga of who is the best StarCraft player in the world right here. Bisu versus Jadong. I am really, really stoked to be watching this game. Uh, Rise, <laughs> perhaps you could express your feelings about this game uh, and things other than shouts. <laughs> well, like you said before, I, I literally was chewing on my microphone in anticipation of this game. It's been a while since I've been this excited about a StarCraft game. And, I mean, i got to be honest, I love both these players. These are probably two of my top three favorite players of all time, and they are top players of all time. So, I mean, we got J-Dog, the best number one Zerg there is out there in the world today, and B-Soup. The number one Protoss in the world today. I guess arguably there are a couple other Protoss that are uh, banging on his door, but I'm still going to say Bisu right now is the number Definitely. one Protoss. So we got the top of each race fighting each other on Heartbreak Ridge, one of my favorite maps of the new Pro League season. And I just, I, I am just uh, dying in anticipation to see what happens here. Like you said, the GOM TV finals of the, the Star League finals from the first season to the second season was an epic epic series, an epic matchup, and I mean, yeah, you, you translated it, you, you have perfect Korean translation, Moltrat, that's exactly what he said, and uh, he said that, that he was lucky, he was lucky to beat Bisu, and I mean, Bisu was seemingly confident even after he lost that match too, so I can only imagine that Bisu really wants to win this, and Jadong, I think, wants to prove that it wasn't a fluke that he won the first match, so uh, right now, I gotta be honest, I this is one of the few times that I really don't have any... Um, I don't know, predictions on who's going to win this match. I don't know if you do, Mole Trap, but right now, I'm just excited that we're watching it. Yeah, man, these guys are just very, very evenly matched. They're basically uh, the top form of their respective races ever. Um, and I, 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 It sounds like an exaggeration. It sounds like hyperbole, but it's really not. This That's really the truth of the situation, is these guys are the top that there has ever been. Um, and it is just, it is, it is going to be tough to call because, you know, in the GOM TV finals, we thought that was going to be, you know, the, the match to settle it all as to who was the best StarCraft player, you know, in the world. And it was just, it was the final game was just a little bit weird enough that it was unconclusive. I mean, Jadong had said it himself, um, according to my translation, <laughs> no, I read that translation somewhere else, um, that it was not conclusive and we didn't really get, a, a an all-star champion and, um, so, yeah, personally, if I had, you know, if I had to bet one way or the other, I, I would actually bet on Jadong. Um, I do think he's a better player just slightly, just based in terms of, um, you know, his performances, but that's pretty arbitrary, to be completely honest. Um, both these guys are competing for most wins in the Pro League right now. Both their teams are competing in the Pro League as well. Um, you know, these guys are, are in a fastly growing competition for, you know, most Star League wins between uh, the, the newer generation of players. And uh, so it is going to be tough to call. So we do have, by the way, uh, just in case um, you are completely oblivious to what we're talking about, Bisu is the purple Protoss player on the left side of the map. And uh, Jadong is the teal Zerg player on the right side of the map. And uh, we are seeing um, Jadong go for an early uh, spawning pool here. I forgot to check what, what uh, drone count that was on. But Bisu, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like he put his Nexus down after his forge. He decided he, he had enough spare time to get cannons up after his Nexus, and he is going to be correct because those uh, Zerglings are going to chase around uh, that probe for a while and try and hunt down. So he's going to have plenty of time to get that cannon up. He's going to have a nice, good economy, and I think that's going to put him a little bit ahead of Jadong going into the mid game because... Um, Bisu has, has um, gotten his economy going very quickly, and Jadong, on the, on the other hand, getting that pool first, 
has delayed his economy a little bit. So we'll have to see how that turns out, though. Well, I gotta agree with you. I think that Jadong is maybe ever so slightly favored, but when Bisu is on his game, I would say that he is unstoppable even by Jadong. I mean, if you've seen Bisu play perfect Protoss, which we've seen in the past, he is uh, literally unstoppable. He does not make mistakes, and, and he can just outwit, outplay, out macro, out micro any other player that comes his way. Uh, but it looks like Jadong knows exactly what Bisu's doing uh, because he, he scouted it, and he's actually going to go for three bases of his own to try to keep up in economy uh, right away because, like you were saying, he got that Nexus down quickly, so Jadong is going to have to respond in kind. So it looks like we're going to see a mid to late game uh, developing here at the very least, as it doesn't look like we're going to see any sort of run buys coming from Jadon. And uh, I gotta say, I, I'm more excited that we're going to see a real uh, meaty mid game type of play from both these players rather than some sort of cheesy run by. And I don't think that Jadon is confident that he could pull that off. And Bisu, with his epic scouting uh, prowess, <laughs> able to get that probe through that ridiculous ring of uh, death of Zerglings, and Jadon not able to take it out. Uh, but it, it's still, he's not able to get all the way back to Jadon's base. Jadon, in the meantime, taking a lair. So we'll have to see what he goes with <laughs> from here. It looks like Bisu is uh, going to swap out one probe for another to get a, uh, a full help uh, probe going in the scouting direction. Direction. And man, I, I love Heartbreak Ridge. It is a lot of fun uh, to watch games unfold on because there's so many bases. The layout is just uh, exciting. Those ridges really do add a lot to the play. And uh, there's a lot of uh, interesting strategies that we've been seeing here. So uh, I'm very hopeful that both these players are going to bring out something to uh, wow us. Yeah, definitely. And this, this map, I think a little bit, I haven't looked at the statistics actually, but I think a, a little bit would favor... Um, Zerg, just because of the fact that, like you said, there's place, there's bases all over the place. There's a lot of different routes between the bases. Um, there's you know kind of a central hub in the middle, and there's these ridge spokes to coming off the middle of it. And so you can flank anywhere. Uh, there's almost no places that you can. I, yeah, I don't think there's really anywhere except your main base that that doesn't have a way to flank it in some way or another. Um, and so that I think goes, oh, and Bisu does get that probe scout in and scouts the spire going down. So he knows that Jadong's going for a pretty normal build here. Um, uh, spire off three, three hatches and a lair, and that probe does go down, but he gets all the information he needs off of it anyway. Um, now, that said, you know, Zerg is going to have a lot of opportunity for flanking, that sort of thing. That does tend to favor the Zerg. But I think in the mid-game, it actually might favor, depending on, you know, how things go, might favor Protoss a little bit just because of the fact that um, your expansions are spread out. So that, you know, for instance, that top expansion in the top right corner of Jadong's is going to be a little bit vulnerable. It's going to be hard to get his forces up to protect that if, if Bisu goes for an attack up there. Um, and any other bases that he takes are going to be also equally far from his uh, from his kind of his base area. So, um, you know, again, it's just going to come down to the play style. But it, but these two guys are just so good at this game. Um, I'm sure that you know they're taking all these things to, into account, and it's just so spectacular to watch a matchup like this because of the fact that there's just such high level play going on. But um, by the way, real quick factoid here: uh, Jadong and Bisu have apparently before this game met 12 times in their life. And uh, most recently was that GOM TV thing. And in those 12 times, Jadong has actually won seven of them. So um, I, I think you're right. Bisu in his top, 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 top form might be a little bit better than Jadong's top form. But uh, Bisu isn't always in his completely top form. So we'll have to see what, he's, what game he's going to bring today. Well, that's very true, and uh, we've seen Bisu where he's had off days, and Jadong's off day is probably better than Bisu's off day, if that makes any sense. But uh, anyway, it looks like Bisu is getting out a couple of Corsairs. He's already taken out two Overlords, maybe three. I think I only saw two go down so far. If they click on... No, look, three kills on that Corsair. Sorry, so he's actually taken three out, and he is doing the Bisu build, something we don't see too often uh, from players these days, because it, it's, it's more uh, Sair, Reaver, or, or something. Well, I don't know, maybe sometimes we see it. But uh, Bisu is going for Sair DT, so um, he, he is going to stick to his guns, what he knows best. He's taking out four Overlords already. That is going <laughs> to hurt uh, Jadong a lot more than you would think, actually. And uh, Jadong is going to actually be a little bit behind so far, because he's done zero damage uh, to Bisu so far, although he's got a good range. Uh, he's got a ton of Overlords at his front door. But, oh, and is he going to, he's going to surround that DT. Yes, he does nice. surround it. He takes it out. So Bisu does lose his first unit uh, of 
worth in, in that DT right there, and he's already transitioning to a high Templar, so it looks like he's going to lay off the DTs for now, although I'm sure we'll see more of them later in form of harassment uh, to Jadong's uh, further bases. Yeah, um, I think it's an even trade. Uh, actually, it might even be in, in Bisu's favor, you know, as far as taking out four Overlords, but then losing that DT without doing any damage. Um, I, you know, like you said, it is actually a significant amount of damage because not only is he short 400 minerals for making the overlords, but that's time that he's not able to uh, be making drones or hydralisks or what have you. Um, by the way, uh, just a little tiny note here. Like I said earlier about how his, his base is going to be vulnerable, he's Jadong is doing really, really well putting his buildings in optimal placement. You saw he had that den and the... Um, the Evo Chamber, I believe, up in the... Yeah, and he's got the colony right behind it. Yeah. So normally, three or four zealots could run in there and kill all the drones. Uh, but by putting that building there, he's got a really good placement. You know, he could, he can do... He can hold off a significant little force with just that one sunken. And, and it's smart play like that that is, you know... That makes the you know the top players absolutely top because they can do smart things like that. Um, Bisu sees it, of course, when he's got his Corsairs. Bisu loves his scouting, so he's running his Corsairs all over the place, just trying to see what's going on. Um, and so he's he's not he's going to anticipate uh -huh. that. So a lot of <laughs> Corsair does go down. Scouts the main at least, but uh, that's actually a, a surprisingly sloppy for Bisu. Normally he wouldn't have lost that Corsair. He would have uh, somehow danced it around in circles and gotten it back to his base somehow. But uh, Anyway, you can see Jadong just totally skimping on the buildings and the defense, just going, you know, trying to cut as many corners as he can. Oh, a bunch of mutalists popping out! A bunch of mutas popping out nice. now um, to accompany the Hydras. Wow, and I, Bisu has a few uh, Corsairs and a few uh, Dragoons here, but I don't know if he has a whole lot to deal with these with these mutalists. Probably what the mutas are going to do is dive in, kill off the High Templar, and then that will make it so that the, the Hydralisks and, and Zerglings will have a better chance of, uh, of doing damage to the rest of the forces. Um, we'll have to see if he can actually get in there and kill the High Templar off before, and here he goes in! Oh, Psystorm on top oh. of the mutas! Two Psystorms on the mutas! Those mutas are down to one-third health. Those were beautiful storms. One of them right in the path wow. of mutalists. So those mutas are really damaged. They are not really in a good position to run in there and kill off those Templar anymore, especially with the Dragoons around to finish them off. That did not work out for Jadong well at all, although it looks like he is going to manage to pick off a couple. He's taking heavy fire from those goons, and like you said, they're almost all of them were uh, down to a third health, and so it only takes a couple of shots from the goons to finish off the straggling one. So unfortunately for Jadong, uh, that group of muted not nearly as effective as he had hoped to be, and uh, he, he may just try to keep them alive for a while to hope that they regenerate a little bit so he can use them more later in the, in the game. But no, look at that, man. There are so many goons there. I mean, Bisu is very goon heavy right now not that yeah. many zealots at all uh that's going to be very good <laughs> against uh you know mass muta attack like that i don't know if he foresaw that or not bisu also counting it up at both of his bases uh fairly well and he's putting up a third base so now he's going to be even with jadong in terms of bases uh so jadong's definitely going to be wanna, wanting to get a fourth base very shortly because bisu if he's on three bases three gas i mean he's going to be pumping out high-tech units like templar and other and other units that man it's just going to be very difficult for even Jadong to deal with and this was this is exactly what I was talking about if uh, Bisu's game is on we saw the first person point of view of both players before and you could just see the high level play that that, that was at, in this game right now I mean these players were all over the place taking care of their macro they were microing individual units I mean that's 400 APM for you useful APM and now Jadong actually going in for attack no he realized that he's going to get flanked but no he pulls back to try to take out a couple of Corsairs for free manages to get one storm going off not killing anything and Jadong can Continue to try to bounce around with those muted to pick off uh, High Templar, but it looks like he's lost critical mass. No, they're just not all together, and so he's not able to one pick them off one by one. Very close <laughs> on Hydra's, Hydra's being taken out by great storms by Bisu, oh, and man, man. Jadon oh. is losing way too many units. Oh, bad storm dodging, great storms, of course, and oh, Jadon is hurting right now, and Bisu is now able to put the pressure on. Oh my god, Bisu's. Oh man, Jadon, he may have lost. Uh, he may have lost the game, honestly, with this lack of storm dodging, because now Bisu has complete map control. He's on the offensive. Jadong, of course, actually, I, of course, underestimated his macro. He's pumping out tons of Hydralisks now. He's doing some good target firing, it looks like, um, and uh, picking off a good amount of units. So I don't think this is going to be a killing blow for Bisu. He's not going to be able to push this home too much. 
Uh, Jadon, I think, is just going to get too many Hydras out, especially with the fact that he did, like you said, he was able to run in there and kill off some High Templar um, with those Mutalists, despite the fact that they were so low on health. And I think that's, I mean, <laughs> you saw those storms. Those, be those were beautiful storms. If he had a couple uh, more storms, awesome. it would have been, it would have been, you know, it would have been over. But, um, yeah, as you can see, he, he, Bisu is going to actually manage to pick off those Hydras, but he has reinforcements coming in. Maybe Bisu is just going to try and macro his way down Jadong's throat here. He's just rallying his Dragoons here and going straight in. He's going to try and kill off that 12 o'clock base, and uh, if he's able to do that, he's going to have a huge lead because he's managed to hold um, that, that bottom left base at the same time, and uh, he's had no economic... Um, uh, harassment from Jadong at all. No no probes have been killed by Mutalists or anything like that, and the hatchery does go down. So we're looking at three bases versus three bases, and that is not, and a fourth going up for Bisu, and that is not a uh. good position for the Zerg when, when the Protoss has map control to, to boot. Especially when the Protoss is Bisu. I mean, of all players, <laughs> you don't want Bisu having map control, you know? I mean, he's just uh, he's just putting himself in such a great position. And one thing I like about what he's doing is he's making sure... Oh! Another free storm off on Hydra's right there. Not even realizing what was going on. Jadong loses a couple more. Now moving into Lurkers. It looks like he's morphing 10 right there. And so uh, that's going to put up a good fight. But still, there are already observers out on the field. There are already a ton of Dragoons and a ton of Templar. Bisu's just got the perfect unit comp position to deal with almost anything Jadon can throw at him other than Ultra, but of course he'd have plenty of time to prepare for that as well. And, ah, oh man, he's just in a great position with four bases, four well-defended bases. Every expansion is getting two to three cannons or more. And Jadon, on the other hand, like you said, very sparse in terms of defense around his bases. While he's got great building placement, it's just not enough if he's only got units on the ground, because if he's caught out of position, like you were saying before, this is a large map. How do you defend all the bases at once? And while he's got the top level going in his favor, you know, trying to keep it so that he can defend that whole front at once. It's still a diff difficult position to, to try to get all those defended. And so Jadon just finding himself in a tough position, um, especially having lost that main battle. And I think you're right. I think the turning point was already when he just lost uh, a, a control group and a half of Hydras to two psionic storms that he could have dodged had he been paying better attention. And, and I really am surprised that he didn't dodge that. And look at this. I mean, Bisu already back on top of the expansion, sees what's going on. We see the first person view of Jadong in the bottom middle, and uh, he's trying to prepare for anything that might be heading his way. But Bisu just, man, he is playing a perfect game right now. Yeah, this is that that's crazy. I think another thing that factored into it was that storm, those two storms on the mutas as well. And actually, Bisu now going in an attack on Jadong's natural. Jadong has a lot of lurkers in there, so I'm not sure how much good it's going to do. He picks off the observer as well, so that's going to force oh. Bisu back for a little bit. And I think now Jadong is really, really good at doing that, at picking off those observers, sending in a single scourge and overlord and doing that. And he may be able to buy enough time to get himself back into the game by doing something along those lines. I think that's his plan. I think that's why he went for the lurkers, is just so that he can, um, you know, play, uh, you know, chicken with the with the observers and just try and kind of buy time from to get those two bases at the top up. And if he can do that and get his hive up, then he'll be able to get back into the game. Bisu, we've seen some excellent tactical play from him, though, um, going out and, uh, you know, when he has the advantage, when he knows that he, he can play defensive, when he knows that he has to play defensive, he plays defensive and gets a base up, and then he attacks when he has the advantage and, and again, puts a base up again when he's when he's able to attack. So just, just using his his army just uh, beautifully as far as positioning. And, and this, here we go, there's the Zerglings coming into play. When those Zerglings get crack upgraded, then we might see a resurgence of, of Jadong here. I'm not sure how far off his hive is, but uh, oh, oh, the Observer stays alive. Um, that's another thing that might be able to get Jadong back in this game as well, especially with a goon-heavy army, is the those Cracklings. Although, actually, with Bisu's storms, I'm not so sure about that after all. And here, Bisu trying to attack uphill. Um, unfortunately, I, I think that's the only reason why Jadong was able to push him back, because that is a ton of Dragoons right there, and a fifth base going up for Bisu in the bottom right. This is ridiculous. 
You know, part of the amazing uh, play that we see here is not just, you know, the macro and the micro. It's the decision-making. You see that BC, yeah. even though he's got a ridiculous amount of troop count right here, he doesn't commit. You know, he realizes sometimes that it's not best to fight uphill battles. And right now, you see him turning away, even though, again, he's got the superior side count for sure and could probably take out a lot of those units. But the losses he would, he would incur would be way too much uh, for him to maybe overcome if he just carelessly lost everything. So, I mean, these are, these are the things that these pro gamers are thinking about these split second decisions that they're not even thinking about consciously you know they just do it and uh, I mean J-Dog doing the same thing of course doing a great job making sure he picks off things like the observers because it's a delay tactic he's making sure he gets that hive up he realizes that this, the tier 2 tech is not working out against the unit composition that we see here so he's transitioning to that hive tech and he's trying to delay with these lurkers but Bisu is pushing his way up for real this time he's got observers out they're not getting scourged what oh it does get scourged here and he's forced once again to back off. So Jadon continuing to stall as the Defiler's Mound is going down because we saw the Hive Tech already finished. And so uh, Jadon most likely going to try to get off some Dark Swarms and Cracklings like you were talking about. And if he can do that, he can certainly take his game back into his hands because uh, Cracklings, of course, can take down the Nexus in about 30 seconds. No, probably uh, 15 seconds if you get a good surround on it. So yeah. uh, we'll have to see if he's able to do that. Yeah, definitely. And... Um uh, uh, another bit of tactics piece is going. You, like you said, he's not really committing. He may be committing now. Actually, he's been whittling down Jadon's forces. I'm not sure if he's going to go all in on this. There is another line of lurkers behind there. He loses his observer. Um, he seems to <laughs> not. Oh, he doesn't have another observer because the dragoons are not attacking. Oh, he loses a few dragoons and an archon um, because he wasn't able to see those lurkers there. But he may squeeze his army past. I'm not sure if he's going to try and go through or not. He is. He brings in another observer. He's able to stay on the same level of ground now and attack these lurkers. So those lurkers are going to go down. Oh, is the good? Oh, the observer does survive. Some cracklings coming in from behind. Uh, he may be able to hold this off. But critically, you know, what Bisu is doing is just kind of running in, killing off a couple lurkers, running out, casting the storm, etc. And just kind of keeping Jadon occupied while he... Um, <laughs> while he got his fifth base up and Jadong with a complete lack of zerglings around consumes an overlord to try and get a swarm on that um, awesome. on that lurker um, but Jadong is fighting a, 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 a well not an uphill battle actually he's fighting a downhill battle and he's uh, being fought down the hill Bisu with a commanding um, advantage here just kind of forcing him slowly back and slowly back and slowly back and uh, now you know they're at five bases each right now but this is the point where where Bisu has the, the chance, and this is exactly, yeah, he's going to take down this hatchery. And uh, you do not want the Protoss to have a couple bases on you uh, as a Zerg player and map control. I think this is pretty much it for um, for Jadong. So it uh, looks like their record is going to go to 7-6 and six with Bisu taking uh, taking the uh, the tiebreaker, I guess, if you discount Game 5 and the, the champions uh, face off from the GOM TV or whatever. Um and it's just amazing that that it just it came down to a few storms. I think that gained Bisu enough of a map map advantage that he could take all these bases and get the economic advantage that's uh, led him to victory now. Yeah, so this is this is going to even things up a little bit more in the favor. And oh, you can see the look on Jadong's face. GG, G -G. coming from Jadong. You know, maybe Jadong was just tired of carrying his team all these times, and finally said, "Hey, wow. my back is broken, guys. I need to just take a break here." And I mean, I I gotta say, if he's gonna lose to a player. Bisu's probably one of the best players that you can lose to, so certainly not to take anything away from Jadong. Bisu really did play a perfect game right there, you know? He really didn't make any big mistakes that I can think of, and unfortunately for Jadong, he made a couple of mistakes. Again, we saw them, we pointed them all out, and it just was not enough to take that game, and he is visibly upset about it. His hands are shaking, uh, eyes wow. tearing up, I think. I think he thought that he could have won that game, and I think on maybe other circumstances he could have, but unfortunately for him, not this time but i gotta say man gg overall yeah yeah that was an awesome game and you know even though there were a couple mistakes here and there um you know we we got to see some of the finest starcraft there is and that that is um that is always fun to see and bisu really really excited about that win uh definitely deserves it and i yeah i mean i think it's just amazing how they both played almost perfect perfectly in their decision making and their tactics and everything Except there was just a couple occasions where Bisu had the edge, and you know, a, and a couple occasions where Jadong 
you know, earlier on was able to was not able to do something and and when when a pro gamer has an advantage like that, they keep it and they press it home. And uh, you know, sometimes it takes uh, 25 minutes, but but they don't. You know, some player like Bisu is like a, a pit bull. He does not let go once he's got a grip on that advantage. So I hope you guys enjoyed that game. Thanks for watching. GG. Thanks for watching. GG. <laughs>